Hey guys, what is going on? So it seems like almost every video I do on the Galaxy phone, anytime I show some sort of tips and tricks, uh, it always kind of shocks me to know that there are actually a decent amount of people that comment on my videos that don't know the tricks that I did. And they always ask me, hey, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? So ever since uh, One UI 2.0 came out, I thought it'd be a pretty good idea to go ahead and do a tips and tricks video for One UI 2.0. Uh, for the Samsung. This video is going to be good for people that are just maybe now buying into Samsung or for those of you who have been using Samsung for quite a while and just want to learn some new tips and tricks. And since this is One UI 2.0, most of these tricks are even going to carry over into the Galaxy S20 or the S11, uh, whatever they're going to end up calling it. If you have one, if you're watching this video in a few months, uh, try this out. <laughs> So I hope you guys are enjoying my new little friend. Uh, he is the uh, new addition to Mark's Tech. Uh, this is actually the cameraman. His name is Jeff. Everybody say hi to Jeff. Now this first tip has to do with alternate type of look. So uh, if you ever have uh, trouble with face unlock, maybe that day you have on a hat, you have on some sunglasses, you know, maybe it's just cold that day and you have on uh, a hoodie maybe. And uh, for some reason, Face ID or Face Unlock is not working. What you want to do is go into Settings. Click on Biometrics and Security. Click on Face Recognition and put in your password. Once you do that, you have an option to add an alternate look. So maybe if, uh, like I said, if it's cold outside and you're wearing a hoodie with some sunglasses, uh, you know, a lot, almost every day maybe, you want to add that alternate look so whenever you are uh, outside the next time, the S10 will unlock the phone using face unlock uh, by using that alternate look. The next tip actually is inside the new camera interface. So as you guys can see, I have live focus video, slow motion, super slow motion, live focus, photo, video, and hyperlapse, and then I got this more tab. Let's say I don't really need all of those. Maybe I don't use hyperlapse a lot, or maybe I want something else in that position. What you want to do is go to more and click on this little pencil icon. What that will do is it can actually enable you to remove uh, whatever you don't want. Maybe you just want photo and video. Uh, those are grayed out because you actually cannot remove them for obvious reasons, but you can remove live focus. You can remove super slow motion, slow motion, uh, live focus video, so on and so forth. So here you can just either click on night mode and drag it down here and then you'll see night mode there, but maybe you want it to be over, over, you know, to the right a little bit more. You can actually rearrange it anywhere you want. Then you just click save. And then your new kind of layout will be as you put it. So new with Android 10 and One UI 2.0, you finally got full screen gestures. So for example, you know, swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to go to recents, and then uh, as well as, you know, just swipe on either side to go back. And there's also a new little navigation bar as you guys see here. So what this bar does, again, similar to the iPhone, you can swipe back and forth uh, between the apps that you've been previously using. So just, you know, to get quicker access. But if you do not want that bar there, maybe you wanna, you know, maybe you want the screen to have a more cleaner look, all you gotta do is go into settings, search up navigation bar, and then turn off gesture hints. What this will do is it will erase that little bar on the end, but this does have a downside and uh, you cannot pretty much, you can't swipe between apps as you would before. So if you like the idea of swiping between apps like this, then you wanna keep this on. So this next tip has to do with optimizing your phone so it runs as good as it possibly can. So you want to go to settings and then go to device care. And then click on the settings button on the top and go to advanced. And here you will see if auto optimization is turned on. What this will do is it will uh, pretty much delete all the uh, cached files and your background applications at least once per day uh, just to keep your phone running good. Now to take it a step further, you can go ahead and click on uh, auto reset. Now what this will do is it will actually fully reset your phone. So it will turn the phone off and then turn it back on, on the specified date or multiple days and at what time. I recommend doing it at a time that you are normally sleeping. Uh, for me, um, it is three o'clock and that's almost pushing it by the way. <laughs> I am very tired. 
but yeah, this will actually um, kind of give your phone pretty much a reset. You know, we are all lazy to do resets. Don't lie to me. I know you are and so am I. So this does it automatically for you as you are sleeping. The next generation Galaxy phones are going to be insanely huge with the smallest one rumored to be around 6.4 inches. Uh, guys, that is pretty massive for the smallest phone. The biggest phone is going to be 6.9 inches. That is insane. So this tip is uh, especially for the future S11, S20 owners, but you can even use it right now with the S10 Plus. So this is a new way to get into one-handed mode. If you have gestures turned on like I do, all you gotta do is swipe down from the bottom and then it will go into one-handed mode. From here, if you click and hold on the corner, you can actually resize it to however, you know, whatever kind of size you want. And you can also, if you're a lefty, you can click on the left side. And then if you're a righty, you can click on the right side. And then just to, you know, to get out of this mode, you just click anywhere on the black and it will go back to its original size. If you do not have gestures turned on, if you got that three button navigation, all you got to do is click the home button three times really fast. And that will also bring you to one handed mode. So if you've ever accidentally deleted a contact, maybe you got pissed off at your boyfriend, girlfriend, or that really annoying kid in class, but now you got to. Now you gotta text him to get, you know, to get up to date on the homework because you've been missing out so many days of school. Uh, very relatable. All you gotta do is if you do accidentally delete a contact, like let me go ahead and delete her. I don't even know who she is anymore. <laughs> so I just deleted her. So now she's gone from my life entirely. But JK, no she's not because if you click on this hamburger menu, you go to trash, boom, it will actually tell you the day that you deleted the person. And obviously, if you click and hold, you can go ahead and choose to restore that. And similar thing to the My Files application. If you've ever deleted something from My Files, all you gotta do again is click on the menu, click on trash, and then you can now restore the uh, files that you uh, deleted by accident. Uh, so now you won't be fired from your job, or maybe now you just saved yourself because you can finally get back to doing your taxes that you previously deleted. Now this next thing isn't really new for One UI, but if you are coming uh, from an, a different device, maybe if you are an iPhone user and you're coming over to Samsung, uh, the icons straight out of the box are hilariously huge. They are just way too big. They don't look, I mean, they almost look a little cartoony. They don't look real. To help solve that issue, all you gotta do is click and hold on the home button and then go, or click and hold on the home screen and then go to uh, home screen settings. Here, I recommend putting the home screen grid to five or five by six, which is the most it can do. And then also the apps screen grid to five by six as well. What this will do is it will allow more applications to be on the home screen. Therefore, the applications are going to be smaller. From this menu, you can also enable I, uh, app icon badges. So again, similar to what you got on the iPhone. So if you click this on, every application that has a notification, you will actually see the number notification. And also while we are here, if you have kids and you give uh, the phone to your kids to play around a little bit and you don't want them messing up your home screen because you just spent seven hours and 18 days uh, <laughs> getting it just right, all you gotta do is in that same menu, uh, click on lock home screen layout. Once you enable this, you cannot uh, move or change the apps anywhere. It will actually say the home screen layout is locked. If you guys are ever scrolling through Instagram and you see a really hilarious video, you wanna send it to your friend, but that Instagram account is private and your friend is not following them. All you gotta do is just click down or swipe down, I should say, not click down. You don't click on that. And then select on screen recorder. Now you got the option to record with no sound, which if you're gonna be recording a video, you might as well add some sort of sound. You can either do the media sounds, so anything that's coming from the actual video that you are recording, or you can do the media and mic sounds. So for example, if you are recording yourself playing a video game and you wanna do a commentary on top of it, you wanna make sure that third one is uh, selected. But once you select it, you just click on start recording it will do a little countdown and it will start recording. Now, while we're here, you guys see that floating little new icon that popped up. If you click on the face camera, it will actually start recording the face camera. So from here, again, this is excellent if you do a lot of gaming commentaries on the phone. 
you want to record your face, you want to record your voice, and you want to record the game at the same time, you can do that all the way from here. Also, if you click and hold on screen recorder, it'll bring you to a more kind of comprehensive settings list. Here you can change the video quality, you know, 1080p, 720p, 480p. Uh, again, you can select the sounds as well as how big that face camera is going to be on the uh, screen. Now, if you guys do a lot of uh, reverse power share, um, I personally don't because my battery is my battery. Sorry, Ashley, I don't care if your phone is dying. That's not my problem. Be more responsible, you know, and carry an extra charger. It's really that simple. But let's say you are a good friend, unlike me. Uh, you want to give your friend some juice, but you don't want to give them a, too much, you know. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Don't do that. So click and hold on reverse power share. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> click and hold on it. You can now set a battery limit. So if you are a super good friend, you can set the battery limit to 30%. So if you are charging somebody, uh, somebody else's device and your phone goes under 30%, it's going to cut off the power to the device that you are charging. Now, if you are a very greedy friend, you can set the battery limit to 90%. Um, but again, I would rather have 100% because I'm not sharing my battery with nobody. Now, this next tip again is not new to One UI 2.0, but I'm telling you this is the best, or I should say one of the best features of Samsung. I'm not exactly sure how long ago this came out, but this is probably the best feature. So if you guys just opened your Samsung up, make sure this is turned on because this is gonna be a game changer. So you wanna to go to settings, click on search, and then type in video enhancer. It should be the very first one. Make sure video enhancer is turned on. When it's turned off, the, the, the video that you are going to be watching is, isn't simply gonna look as good as if you turned it on. It's gonna get nice and bright. And uh, it will actually tell you out of all the applications you have installed, where does video enhancer work? So for me, it works pretty much on everywhere that has video on it. Now what this also does, and the reason I like it so much is, you guys see my screen brightness, right? It's not changing, I have it manually set. But whenever I watch a video, I want my screen to be as bright as possible. I wanna enjoy the video. I wanna get those nice vibrant colors. So look what happens when I open up YouTube. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the screen actually went uh, much brighter. So let me go ahead and go home and I'll show you guys that the screen will automatically dim to its original, uh, original state. See, you guys see that? So pretty much what's, what's happening is that anytime you're watching a video on those supported applications, it's simply the screen's just gonna get brighter and the colors are gonna pop nice and good. Unlike on the iPhone, if my screen brightness is set to whatever it's set at, if I go to YouTube, it's not gonna get any brighter. So I actually have to manually go, turn up the brightness to maximum settings, and then go back to YouTube, watch the video, and then go home, and then put the brightness down to where I want it to be. On the Samsung, it does it all for you automatically. Now this next tip uh, is something to do with the new calendar layout. I actually really like this uh, feature. It may seem a little childish, but it just adds a little extra personality to your boring calendar. So I don't know if you guys can read that, but on the 12th of this month is Jessica's birthday. What I can do is I can go here and click on a sticker. And then I can actually choose a sticker that best fits that day. So since it's her birthday, and I got no other plans that day, I can just select a little sticker and then that sticker will permanently be there. So maybe if you got, you know, something uh, to do with school, you can add some books, maybe, uh, you know, you and your, <laughs> you and your uh, buddy's girlfriend are studying for uh, chemistry. You know, you can add some, uh, some, some school uh, emojis next to uh, that date on the calendar. Now, as you guys can tell, my icons look a little bit different than yours might. And uh, all you gotta do really to change the icons is uh, go into developer options. But before you do that, you actually have to enable it. So again, go into settings, go to search, and then look up software information. Once you do that, you wanna click on the build number five times really fast. 
As you guys can see for me, developer mode has already been turned on for you. If you haven't done this already, it's gonna take five taps really quick to turn on developer mode. Once developer mode is uh, activated on the, main, uh, on the main settings screen, you wanna scroll all the way down and go into developer options. When you're here on developer options, again, scroll all the way down. And then you will see icon shape. I have mine set to teardrop, but you can set it to square, squircle, and rounded rectangle. Now, since this is in the developer options, whatever one you pick, you actually have to restart your phone and then turn it back on and then it will have it set to that. So maybe sometime in the future, Samsung can actually implement this into the actual settings of the phone instead of developer options. But right now, this is a, a very good workaround. Now, while we are here in developer settings, again, if you are new to Samsung, developer settings is your friend. Don't be scared of this. Just don't turn on things that you have no idea what you're doing, you know, just uh, a little common sense goes a long way. But in developer settings, what you wanna be looking for to make your phone a little more quicker, uh, a little more speedier, a little more snappier, whatever you wanna call it, you wanna go ahead and find a window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator uh, duration scale. I have mine set to 1X. So for example, this is what everything looks like. If I open it, you know, take note of the actual speed that the applications open, take note of the actual animation. You know, it's a very nice gradual kind of, very smooth, very smooth and gradual. Now, if I go back into developer options and put that to 0.5. And now it's gonna be much more speedier. Did you guys see that? Way speedy. Speedy Gonzalez over here is about to steal your girlfriend. So again, if you want to speed up your phone, again, it's window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. Put that to, put all three to 0.5. Now this last tip also has to do with developer options, but I, I really don't see anybody ever talking about this and it's really surprising. So if you have unlimited data and you're not afraid of using your data, I have unlimited, so I have no point of, you know, kind of being worried, am I on Wi-Fi? Am I on network? Oh my God, is my mother gonna kill me because the bill is gonna be so high? I don't gotta worry about that. But since I don't have to worry about it, I click on, mobile data always active. Now what this does is fast network switching. So if you go between Wi-Fi networks and cell networks a lot, sometimes you may find that it takes a little bit of time for your phone to switch out of Wi-Fi and into LTE. This does it automatically very quickly because your mobile network is gonna be always active regardless if you are connected to Wi-Fi or not. Well guys, there you have it. If my math is correct, that was 15 tips and tricks for the Samsung running One UI 2.0. I know some of those tricks weren't exactly new to One UI 2.0, but they do better your Samsung experience. So far, I don't know about you guys, but I am loving uh, One UI 2.0. It just, uh, it, it, it tells us how good the Samsung S11 or the S20 is going to really be. I've had zero issues with this at all. The battery life is actually a little bit better than a One UI 1.0 and 1.5. So if you guys have any more tips and tricks that you wanna add, maybe something that I didn't cover in this video, but you think it's very important for other people to know, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. Let's have a, let's have a very nice discussion. No, you know, no arguing, no yelling, even though I don't know how you can yell over a comment, but you guys know what I mean, shut up. So this was Mark from Mark's Tech, adios.